What's going on, guys? Thank you for tuning in to the BS Show. Brett and Steven here. It is Monday. We are post UFC 243. Great night of fights. Steven and I both watched it. Unfortunately, we were not together, but we did get to check it out and we texted like two little girls the whole time. Um, so let's just jump right into it here, man. I Hold mean, on. we didn't text two little girls. We texted <laughs> each other like two little girls. So yeah, I guess just I to should, clarify, should that. <laughs> elaborate a little more. <laughs> Oh, man. So, what'd you think of the fight? I mean, we'll get into the card a little bit more in detail, but overall, what'd you think? Man, are we talking about the main event just, or the just whole the, card? Just the card, yeah. I like the card a lot. I was um, disappointed in a couple people. I was really happy in other people. And yeah, that's kind of what I got out yeah. of it. I was blown away by the venue. Like, when they're walking out, they walked a mile and a half mm -hmm. to even get to the octagon. It was awesome. And then I liked how they had a little tunnel... And it was just really cool to see that uh, when they have a venue that big that just gets sold out. You know, that goes to mm -hmm. show that the fans are awesome and that, you know, g going all around the world, these are places where we can really get more fans on board. It's like night and day from the Mexico card, right? Where yeah. things didn't go their way and people are yelling, booing, pouring beer on yeah. Cara Esparza. And then in these fights, they just enjoy the fighting. They're yeah. so happy. They love it. You know what I mean? Props to those fans over there. Yeah. Well, and as a fan, you and I and anywhere in general, you have to understand it's not always going to be a storybook ending. Mm -hmm. Just because you're, you're living in Australia, the cards in Australia doesn't mean Dana White can't wave his magic and make sure every Australian fighter wins. So, um, or New Zealander wins. But overall, a great night of fights. So, let's talk about Ty... Tu Ty T how, how do you say his name? <laughs> Ty Tuivasa. So, Ty Tuivasa holds a special place in our heart. As you may remember, when we hit, was it 50 or 100 subs? Somewhere around there. So 50 or 100, one of our first milestones, we did a shoey just to celebrate that. Now, we wanted Ty Tuivas to win, or at least I did. I kind of like Ty Tuivasa. I wanted him to win. I like him I a lot. I feel like he's a fan favorite, but he's been kind of sucking lately. Yeah. And the more and more I watch him, the more and more I realize that he doesn't have no ground game. And on mm -hmm. top of that, he's not even that great of a striker. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's almost like one-dimensional. He has no jabs. He doesn't understand timing or distance. He just likes, if you get in close, he just likes to throw hard punches. Yeah, yeah. Well, and as a heavyweight, all it takes is that one shot. Exactly. And I feel like that's kind of what his resume was predicated on was that knockout power. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really see anything. And the thing that stood out in my mind in that fight was, uh, I forget who he even fought, but he took him down time after time after mm -hmm. time. And that's when a light bulb went off. I'm like... Well, now that Ty Ty now that Tiu Voss has figured out, this is what's going to happen. You know, you get these fighters that are so one dimensional, and then someone figures them out, and now this is the game plan: take them down, make them work. And unfortunately, it kind of shows how slim our um, heavyweight division is right now. I know we got a couple of good fighters up there in the top five, but I mean, most divisions mm -hmm. are stacked one through ten, and even yeah. further down, the heavyweight division has some growing to do. So, well, that's always heavyweight's always been like that. I feel like it's just hard to find guys that damn big mm -hmm. that, that they can fight and that are strict enough Technical, to stay in shape. Fast. So, you know, Ty is lucky that the weight division is like that because what's that three in a row now? Mm -hmm. Three losses. So, UFC normally cuts you if you lose three in a row. But you know, hopefully, there's some brighter days ahead for him. And he, you know, changes up his game plan. But but so moving on to the co-main event, we got Ally Quinta against Dan Hooker. That was a fight that Steven and I were going back and forth on a lot. And I picked Ally Quinta and that to kind of keep it spicy. But Steven can, can contest to this. I text him right before that fight during the walkout. I said, man, I wish I wouldn't have picked La Quinta. I feel like Hooker's going to do it. I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> but I did. He and, says uh, you're such a dumbass for picking Dan Hooker. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he did. He texted me that I kind of feel like Dan Hooker is going to pick um, Ally Quinta apart. And I kind of felt that going into it. But the thing is, I give a lot of respect to Ally Quinta because I feel like he's a smart fighter, you know? Mm -hmm. He is. He's just <clears throat> so undersized. And now it's like that's what... That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, Donald Cerrone and now Dan Hooker, they did it back-to-back -back fights. They did the same exact thing. They picked them apart from distance. They picked their shots. You know, and, and Dan Hooker's takedown defense was way better than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Ally Quinta, not only was he so undersized he couldn't close the distance and get in, 
He was so undersized, he couldn't even land a takedown. So when we were texting back and forth like little girls, Brett texted me about Dan Hooker's ground game. We were really curious on how he was going to look if it went to the ground because we figured Al would try to make it go to the ground because mm -hmm. he has really good ground game. Mm -hmm. he, he's under uh, Matt Sarah, and his jujitsu is wicked. I think he's a black belt, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, but you weren't too impressed with Dan Hooker's ground game, no? No, I wasn't, and the only reason why I wasn't, and I, you know, it, obviously a lot goes to um, Ally Quinta being a black belt, but Dan Hooker had his back, you know, with a with a, a body triangle in, and it's almost like he looked so unfamiliar with what mm -hmm. to do in that situation. Um, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything, you know, worthy at all. But that's such a dominant position. You should at least be able, you know, to hold that position for a while, work from that position. And he couldn't at all. I mean, he got him, he got his back, he got the body triangle in and Ally Quinta just got up. And it's like, granted, he's a black belt, but you know, I mean, does that make sense what I'm saying? It's like, I feel like Hooker should have been able to do more with yeah. that position. So my thoughts on it is Hooker's a heavy striker his whole game is like striking base and to stop the takedowns so for me personally i kind of felt like he overachieved in my eyes on the ground i felt like yeah. if anyone got him to the ground they would be able to keep him down there and dominate him yeah. so just what he did to survive and get back up and even look like he dominated some positions i was yeah. kind of that's surprised, true and that's you know? that's a good way to look at it but i mean i don't know if you feel the same way but i felt like Ally Quinta just looks so small compared to Dan Hooker. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know if Dan Hooker walks around at 185 pounds and he's cutting down. Not only is he longer, but he just looks so much bigger. And it looked like uh, Al ha struggled with, with everything. I mean, he struggled with it all. Um, he really never got going. Hooker, anytime you, know, you thought Al was going to start kind of getting going, Hooker kept him at distance and was picking his shots. And it was a beautiful performance by Hooker. Dude, their distance control over there at City Kickboxing, I know I keep raving about them, but I'm getting more and more blown away by how good of a striker these are. And I guess this is a perfect transition or segue into the main event. Mm -hmm. um, so Robert Whitaker could have wrestled in the Commonwealth Games in Australia, but he chose to defend his title versus Israel Adesanya. And now looking back, that might have been a mistake. Yeah. You know? But he has everything to his game. He's a, he's a great striker, great wrestler. But Israel Adesanya is just a level, I mean, a couple levels above Robert Whitaker. I mean, in the post-fight, Robert Whitaker kept saying, we're two of the greatest in the game, and he just caught me tonight. If it was a different night, it could have went different. And I disagree. I felt like Israel Adesanya figured out Robert Whitaker, and the end of round mm -hmm. one was a clear indicator of that. Now, the re why Robert Whitaker didn't switch up his game plan Going into that second round, I will never understand. Mm -hmm. He just kept coming forward and throwing those looping, hooking punches, which is the way you want to fight Israel Adesanya. You want to pressure him, not let him get his timing down, but you can't keep coming with the same attack, and that's mm -hmm. kind of what he was doing. Yeah. Well, I think it's definitely very, very clear that Adesanya's striking is probably the best in the UFC. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, he... He, as well as Dan Hooker, had a lot of height and size and reach on Whitaker. So, and they're so good at keeping that distance control, to your mm -hmm. point. And, you know, I thought going into this fight, Whitaker was going to win. We both picked it. But, you know, I was watching the lead-up to this fight, and they, they, they had some good points, is that Whitaker hasn't fought in like 16 months, yep. or 12 to 16 months. And in that time period, Adi Asanya has had, I think, over four fights. Mm -hmm. So... Adi Asanya has been very, very active, and he even says, I like fighting a lot. I like staying active. The only way to sharpen your tools is to continuously mm -hmm. be competing. So everything was on Adi Asanya's side going into this fight as far as, you know, health and, and activity and, and reach and all that. But I just had this feeling that Whitaker was going to be able to pull it off. And boy, was I wrong. I mean, Adi Asanya looked awesome. He looked so good. In our defense, too, I feel like... We've seen these fighters come in and look really good and then get stopped once they're mm -hmm. in the top five. So it's kind of easy to say, oh, these guys are hype. You know what I mean? Like the Conor mm -hmm. McGregor's and stuff. And they kind of have to prove themselves mm -hmm. to the fans, the mm -hmm. people who watch every single fight card. I mean, we've only seen the guy fight like six times in the UFC. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we, but the, where we probably made a mistake is 
he is the the more experienced fighter. I mean, he's 30 years old. Robert Whitaker is 28. He's the yeah. older fighter. He has over 80 kickboxing fights. Like he's been there, done yeah. that. He's the elite of the elite in striking. Well, and I I wouldn't necessarily call it a fault, but one of my things is is when you have a champion versus a challenger, I always, unless I just see some glaring weakness in the champion, I it's I always feel like the champ. You know, you got to mm -hmm. beat the champ to be the champ. And that has happened many, on many occasions where you have a guy burst on the scene and he's beating everybody, then bam, he fights two tough opponents, gets beat, and you never hear, you know, mm -hmm. you, you never hear from him again. Not that I thought that's what was going to happen with Adi Asanya, but Whitaker was a different animal up to this point over anybody else he's fought. And I thought Whitaker would, would not struggle like he did. I mean, his movement looks good in the first round, but I think you hit the nail on the head at the end of the first round. Adi Asanya figured him out and had that knockdown. If there would have been 30 seconds left, that it probably would have been stopped. Oh, it would have been done. He was, even when he got up, he was rocked. The referee had to point him to his corner. Yeah. yeah. And then that second round, he it's almost like he already knew, oh, mm -hmm. I got him. And then he was just waiting. And he's so patient. You know, Adi Asanya doesn't throw anything that's crazy or unorthodox. And when I say unorthodox, you know, just wild. Mm -hmm. You know, he's so patient and his striking is so good. And he could hit you from any angle. Uh, yeah. And he always stays right outside of your punching range. So when you come in, all he has to do is lean back a little bit. And then he's good at just yep. leaning back and hitting you with whatever he wants. Yep. And there was a couple of those question mark kicks early in the fight. So snappy. Dude, that Whitaker barely got his arm up. But, I mean, he did not. You couldn't even see it coming. I no mean, just out of nowhere. Drag. Boom. Boom. And I was like, dang. Same. And yeah. his, he is getting, you know, I don't know about you, but for me, when I watched the uh, Gasolum fight, I feel like he's raised the bar even more Definitely. since the Gasolum fight. He's gotten even better, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, what is the, the ceiling for this guy? I mean, I don't know. It's He could be our champion for a while. I mean, when you look at that division, obviously probably the Paulo Costa fights what you need to make happen. Um, I love Paulo Costa. I think, you know, he's a great fighter, but he puts on a lot of, a lot of pressure too. So that could bite him in the butt because that's what Whitaker was doing. And I feel like, I mean, I don't know if you agree. I feel like that's the fight you got to make. You know, you had Paulo um, Costa against Yoel Romero. Costa won that one. Now, Adi Asanye Romero or uh, Costa is what you got to do. They're yeah, they're making that fight for sure. And it's funny because I saw a tweet by John Jones saying, "Oh, you have to take a couple more fights. I don't need to take more fights to know I'm the greatest." Like John Jones, you sat at your weight class forever and refused to move yeah. up the heavyweight. So why are you talking smack on yeah. Israel Asanya for saying? No, I'm going to take a couple more fights and then move up. Yep. Like, I'm sure he's confident, but he he wants to do what's right. You know yep. what I mean? He wants to defend the belt a couple of times. We had an interim champion for a long, long time yep. in that division. Well, and Adi Asanya is even small as far as weight and stature for that division. I was listening to a podcast. I think it was Michael Bisming talk or somebody, or maybe it was uh, Chael Sonnen, but they said he barely cuts weight because he's naturally just mm -hmm. that weight. So for him to move up and fight John Jones at even light heavyweight or heavyweight, that's almost just not practical because he would have to put on at least, you know, 10, 12 pounds, if not more, depending on what weight class they fight at. I don't care. I still want to see it down the no, road. <laughs> no, I, I want to see it. But what I'm saying for, for Israel Adesanya, his natural weight is in that 170 yeah. you know, mark. Why, why try to go up? Now, you run through that division and there's nothing left. Okay, I see it. Mm -hmm. But make John Jones meet you halfway. If you go to 185 or 220 or, or whatever to fight John Jones, well, duh, you're mm -hmm. you're you're going up 30 pounds and John Jones has to cut weight to get to that. Yeah, and John's trying to rush him up so yeah. he doesn't do a healthy or you yeah, know, yeah. So, but I I mean, Adi Asanye, I I've always liked the guy, but this just gave me that that thumbs up, and now that's all I need to see. I mean. He's going to be a, a, a favorite in probably almost any fight. Um, the guy's a star, too. Yeah, oh, that yeah. That walkout, oh, my goodness. Yeah, like, that, that little dance, yeah. I was, I was, you know. <laughs> we were both talking a little. I was blown little, away. We were both talking a little smack on the, the we are like, what is this, NSYNC? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got NSYNC walking him out? <laughs> it was just, cool, though. Yeah, it's just us having some fun, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, he's a good dude. I mean, he's got... the. He he might have the brightest future in the UFC that that we've ever seen. I mean, he's undefeated. He's he's he got a whole country to rep him. I mean, he looks good. Dude, the hype's real. The hype is real on Israel Adesanya. If you had doubts, I mean, I'm pretty sure he washed him all the way on Saturday for sure. So hey, th that's it for this one. 
We're back in the car. It's mobile. We're doing our thing like always. Do it when we can, wherever we can. Right now, we're in a meth head's, head's garage, but you know, it's the only place we have. So, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.